Good. That was on purpose. I'm going to make sure I had your attention. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm glad you're here today on this Sunday after Easter in the history of the church known often as a low Sunday. And indeed, we see no choir up on the stage this morning, no dancing girls today as opposed to last Sunday, but God's people gathered, even though many still on spring break. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to welcome you here today. There's one announcement I'll give you in addition to the, what you'll see on the screen. Uh, if you're a visitor here today, we hope you'll sign in on the guest book. Actually, we hope everybody does. And that friendship book that's in the pew, if you're a visitor, we hope you'll leave your email address so we can reach out and get connected with you. The other thing I would tell you is there is ballroom dancing coming to St. Joe UMC in the next weeks. There'll be more on that in the e-news. You can register for that online. It's a class that culminates in an event of ballroom dancing. It's being taught by someone who attends the Canvas service at 9. She's just trying to get a group together who's interested to learn and participate in that together. You can find out more on the website, and you'll hear more about the other events you can find on the website as well in the Key 3 this morning. Learning to lean, learning to lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. How am I doing? Great. Really? Yeah. Well, that was not convincing. <laughs> but the reason I'm doing it, as we welcome everyone to worship this morning at St. Joe and St. Joe at the Y, is as a reminder of the Ernie Haas concert that's coming up on April 14th. People can go and buy their tickets for that at stjomin.com forward slash events because this is the 21st century after yes. all. And so you can go online, you can buy your tickets there. Will you get a paper ticket? No, you will not. Because again, this is a modern era. You'll get a confirmation email and they'll check your name in on the way as you come in the door. There's an option for a meal at that event as well. And you can opt in or out for that when you register right there. It's going to be an incredible Sunday afternoon and evening with Ernie Haas and Signature Sound and the promise that I will not be given a microphone. <laughs> well, aren't we all glad for that? The other thing that we're glad for is the chance to clean out your closets and your garage and your basement for the UWF's rummage sale, which is happening the last weekend of April. So we're asking that you bring anything that is gently used that the women in faith would be able to sell at the rummage sale on April 17th, 18th and 19th. So you have a chance to get rid of it and the UWF has a chance to sell it and it will all go towards a worthy cause. The other thing that the United Women in Faith are doing is um, some Bible studies. On Thursday mornings, there's one here at St. Joe. There's also one over at the Jackson R. Lehman YMCA. You can find out more information at our website and be able to engage in those Bible studies. There's so many things that people can find. If they just go to stjomen.com forward slash events, or if they go to the website and just sign up for emails. If they're not getting them already, That's they right. can get those too. The one other thing people could learn about that's coming up is the Next Steps class. That's a class for you to figure out if you're new to St. Joe or St. Joe at the Y, or even maybe if you've been here for years, where do I fit? Where do I connect to all of those ministries, all the things that are happening? How do I get plugged in? Come to these classes that will start on April 17th. You can register online or at the Mission Center desk at the back of your space of worship. It'll be a class that will bounce from one campus to the other, exploring all of the areas of ministry and who we are in our vision, in our values, in our being for the fort each and every day. It's such an exciting time to be a part of St. Joe UMC and St. Joe at the Y. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to worship. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what he 
Stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. How shall we live when shadows gather? We are also drawn into one another's What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Let us continue to worship together by singing our opening hymn, number 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voices.
please join us, excuse me, join me as we affirm our faith through our confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. If we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You'd probably have to have it pointed out to you to notice, but out in the courtyard, when you leave, you can look. There is a duck sitting on her nest of eggs. Yeah. Yeah, because, see, part of our role as the called out of Christ is to provide a rest for the weary and for the weak. It is good that St. Joe UMC and St. Joe at the Y should continue to, con to do ministry, to continue to exist, and to continue to provide shelter and safety and freedom for those who need it. From the smallest creatures to the greatest, and all of that is an offering. You may be seated as the ushers come forward to collect God's tithes and offerings.
Let's pray. O oh God, as we greet this week, the first week after we have remembered the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are caused to pause and ponder the many circumstances of our life and our world in which we are looking for resurrecting hope. We look for the resurrecting hope for the people of the world, people in areas torn by conflict from Ukraine to the Middle East, to the people of Haiti. Oh God, we pray that your resurrecting hope would come to the folks there, but also to those who are there with whom we have connections. God, help make us able to help people on their steps towards freedom and towards new life. Help us to be people who join in the power of your resurrection. Help us to find the power of your resurrection as we grieve those we mourn, as we wait for healing from sickness and from surgery. Help us to be people who join in your resurrecting power for those in our lives who struggle with anxiety, with addiction. Oh God, help us to be a part of your resurrecting witness as church as we raise our voices in worship and prayer as we bow our heads and hands in service to one another. O oh God, make us witnesses through these tithes and offerings, that there might be, through our witness, a place of rest for the weak and weary, for those who are heavy laden, and a life abundant, eternal, and free for all people. O oh God, help us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Go ahead. You can dismiss kids to Kids Church, and Miss Erica will be back in the narthex to make sure that the kids can make it down to Miss Taya. Can I go? <laughs> For a second, I thought you were saying, can I read the scripture now? Is that okay with you? But then I realized you just want to go to kids' church. Yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm wounded in a whole new way, Janet, that you don't want to stick around and hear the sermon. No, I, I have to sing. You have to sing. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, our scripture this morning is from 1 John <laughs> chapter 1 and from chapter 2. We announce to you what existed from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have seen and our friends handled in the word of, the, of life. The life was revealed and we have seen, and we testify and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, we are writing these things so that our joy can be complete. This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him and live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. If we claim we have never sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And from chapter 2, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you don't sin. But if you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is God's way of dealing with our sins, and not only ours, but the sins of the whole world. Yeah, 
what's that group of yours over there singing this morning? Just as I am. Oh, just as I am. Let us pray. Oh God, we come here today and we recognize that just as we are, though tossed about, many a conflict, many a doubt, that we can come to you, that you have a way of dealing with our darkness, whose name is Christ Jesus, that in his light we have found ourselves accepted and affirmed, that in his light And in the light of his countenance, we might know that we have found a light eternal and love. Won't you send your spirit, O God, to stir this up within us, just as we are. And just as we are, to begin within us, through the music and through the word proclaimed, through the bread that is broken, a journey of transformation, till all we are is light and love forever. Amen. Amen. Just as I am without one plea.
Just as we are, more, most of the time, we are looking for light and love, whether or not we're aware of it, we are. I remember when I was 18, I graduated from high school, and I headed off to Purdue University. Have you, side note, Greg, Greg, have you ever wondered, is there a God? And then Purdue makes it into the national championship. <laughs> we know they're awake this morning out there. I'd gone to Purdue University, and as I went, I had basked as a child in the light and love of Christian community. I liked my church, but I wasn't really interested in going to church while I was there, but I couldn't avoid it as I would walk down the sidewalk across from the Student Union on State Street. I would walk past the Wesley Foundation, and, and some of you heard me talk about this. It was, it was like the sidewalk to that campus ministry made of brick was glowing, like it was pulling me, like it was calling me. I didn't even know that I was looking for light and love, but there it was looking for me. And so I ended up walking up that sidewalk and getting connected with that ministry, Bible studies, mission trip, and I began to discern a call to ministry, and simultaneously I met a woman who would become my wife. All of that could have been the beginning of a fairy tale, except for one thing. I am a doofus. Nobody said amen for that, Beth. That's a good start to the day. Yes, we were wrestling. I was wrestling with a call to ministry. Should I go? What should I do? I determined I wouldn't stay at Purdue, that I probably should explore and look at Indiana Wesleyan University in Marion to complete a degree in Christian ministry. And so uh, Amy and I were quite seriously dating, and she went with me to look and explore a change in degree for her also. We did a day on campus in Marion to explore that campus and learn about it. And we had the moment come to pass that we were with the financial aid people, and they were laying out all of the costs associated, and it was substantial. And so keeping in mind that our relationship is getting more serious, even even as the call to ministry is as well, uh, I didn't let the moment slip past. I asked the woman, <clears throat> so what would this all look like if, let's say, we were married? <laughs> oh, well, it would change substantially. You would no longer be considered a dependent on your parents' tax return. You wouldn't have to declare their income. You would be independent. You'd have all these other resources available on the drive home. This is what a treasure I am. <laughs> We're driving along, and I just kind of tap her leg, and I say, hey, how about that financial aid package? <laughs> and that was my proposal. <laughs> Fortunately, she said, oh, yes, that, that does sound good. That sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. And so our life bega together began there, and from that, in <laughs> that auspicious moment, we went, and next, you think it gets better, but it doesn't. <laughs> of course it doesn't. The men aren't laughing right now, by the way. They're like, I know on the drive home, I'm going to be reminded. of." <laughs> we went to pick out a ring. We went to my mom's business partner, who, to be fair, did own a jewelry store and would give us a good deal. We picked it out, we got it sized, and you have to wait for it, and so we came back later when the ring was ready. We got the ring from the jewelry store, and we walked next door into my mom's office. And I said, well, here you go, right there in my mom's office. And she said, you're not going to even get down on your knee? And I said, OK, here you go. <laughs> Most of this experience was shrouded in stony silence for 18 years. Until a few weeks ago, we were talking about it in front of our children, and my nine-year-old Mabel heard the story. And Mabel says, Dad, have you never seen a movie in your life? <laughs> that is not what a girl wants. I said, I know, Mabel. 
I know, I know now. <laughs> and I am learning. I am trying to learn. See, the thing is, that was the first foray to really learning. That love and light is not really just about my affirmation, my acceptance. It's about an awakening to the need of the other for the same, for acceptance, for affirmation, for my light to shine in that person's direction. That's essential in every relationship. It was the starting point, if it is going to work at all, of course, for growth and to grow in that direction towards the other. And these principles apply in every relationship, no matter how vast the distance. When we come to the text and the epistle of 1 John, we start with the witness and experience of a community that has found itself as a fellowship, as a group of people, whether they were looking for it or not, in the light and the love of God in Jesus Christ. And this is the witness. We announce to you what existed from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes and what we have seen and touched with our hands about the word of life. The life was revealed, and we've seen it. And we testify to you and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also announce to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. And so here it is. These are the people who, whether they were looking for it or not, have stumbled into the light and love of God together as a fellowship, collectively, as a group. But then something curious has happened. Once they found themselves in the midst of this acceptance and affirmation, the light and the love of God that has been extended to them, they discovered in their midst that there was something else as well. The need to grow. This is the message that we've heard from him and we announce to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and live in the darkness, we are lying and we do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as he is the light, we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from every sin. If we claim we do not have sin, and we, then we deceive ourselves. And the truth, it is not in us. So here's the state of affairs. They have come together, found themselves in love and light, and then discovered as a fellowship altogether that there happens to be darkness there too. There happens to be sin. There happens to be brokenness. There happens to be the need for folks to grow if they are going to exist in a relationship of love with one another. And the best news of all that they proclaim is that we are not left with the discovery of darkness in our midst. A darkness which sometimes we discover as we open the word together and we read along and we say, oh my goodness, I never thought about this thing in my life hurting the people around me, but now that I've read it, I do. We discover that together as we read God's word, amen? And sometimes it happens, just gathered as that fellowship, we're working on the mission of God. We're working together. And my personality happens to rub up against your personality, or your personality up against your personality. And we discover on the mission together that there is darkness between us, within us, that keeps us from loving each other perfectly, but we are not left there, no. No, the best part of their witness comes in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess it, if we name it, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. It's important here to note that this kind of cleansing, this type of growing, is not a magical experience, and it's not a mystical experience in this text. I once knew a guy who stood up in church and he said, I want to give thanks to God because I was smoking. And I asked the Lord to take the smoking away and the Lord's hand touched me and I don't smoke anymore. Well, that's wonderful. Good for him. 
I've known people to have that experience, and I won't necessarily call it into question, but it doesn't seem exactly scriptural in the light of 1 John. For what 1 John's text is telling us is that the process by which God changes us and grows us and transforms us is not a process of a surgeon with a scalpel cutting out the dark. It's not the process of a magician with a wand waving something over us or even God's spirit blowing across us, though perhaps that's possible. No, what happens in this text is people come together in a fellowship, in a family. They come together and their transformation begins to unfold in that way. They learn from one another. And that's the process that grows them. That's a process that's adaptable. It's a glue that's not a fix like on a broken vase, but one that stretches with the fellowship and with the community so that everybody grows together. That's how transformation happens in this text. Whether we are looking for light or love or not, we come together. We discover from that place of acceptance, which, by the way, is the place one has to be to really grow and feel safe to grow, a place of acceptance and affirmation. When we discover those things that need work together, then we grow in them together, and Christ is faithful to meet us in that place. But what it requires, again, the word used over and again, is fellowship. It requires us being together in that light and love of Christ. And in places, we never thought we'd meet it and never thought the light would shine on the darkness. I was about nine or ten years old, and I had a friend come over. It was towards the end of the school year, and I didn't have friends over often, but this kid rode the bus. He lived around the country block in a small gathering of houses. And one day, he rode the bus all the way to the farmhouse in which I lived. He got off the bus. We were going to have a day together after school. When he got off the bus, my mom was making cookies, something that seemed unusual to him. He'd never seen that, and it was the first introduction to how different our lives were. There would be many others. His experiences of life then, and I'm sure now, were quite different. We spent the afternoon after cookies going out across the fields and wandering and exploring in the woods and had a great time. No homework. Just that. We're only nine or ten, after all. And as we came back up towards the house, the sun was beautiful, the soybeans only about that tall and swaying in the breeze. And the breeze, which was brisk, somehow caught his shirt and raised it and lifted it. And in that moment, in that light and love, as we moved across the field back toward the house, I saw something. I saw the purple stripe and then another across his torso. And as his shirt blew up, I saw one across his back. And they were indications to me that even at nine or ten, I could understand how very and troublingly different his experiences were than mine. Even in the midst of the light and the love that day, I knew there was darkness. And in the midst of that, something within me started to grow. I couldn't do a thing about what was happening to my friend. And I wouldn't be able to for years, but I would remember when other opportunities would come that I could do something about, that I must do something about them. And that is what our growth really looks like when we come together in a place of light and love and yet we discover the darkness and the demand on us to grow, some might be say, say to be made holy, to be like Christ. One of my favorite theologians, I like her so much my dog's named after her, is Mildred Bangs Winecoop. That's right, our dog is Mildred Bangs Winecoop Nep. 
We call her Millie for short. Mildred Weinkoop wrote the following that expresses the sentiments that I'm getting at better than I can. She wrote, I have a controversy with Christ. He will not let me rest. In his presence, I cannot rest and relax on my faith in him in a lazy way that dulls my moral sensitivity. When I have done a job, he confronts me with a bigger task, one always too big for me. When I am selfish, he rebukes me until it smarts. When I'm insensitive, he has a way of prodding my conscience into activity. And when I cry and pray for a little heaven in which to go to heaven in, he shows me the hell in which other people live. It isn't time for heaven yet. That is the kind of witness of people who come together in light and love and know it's true. But as they come together by bumping up into each other or into God's word, realize there is room to grow for the sake of the other, for the sake of what Christ has done for us. The beautiful part of what is expressed in all of this is it's a movement away from our habits to so often break holiness and justice into separate things. We work on mission here and Bible study here and prayer over here and worship over here and works of compassion and justice here. No! The journey to becoming like Christ is all of them together as we exist in relationship and find ourselves provoked to grow. There were 80 people who said amen for Purdue. <laughs> there was one for growth in holy and relational love of God. Why? Because to do it, we have to be in fellowship. We have to be together. We have to be willing to say, I should have done better about that. And to be willing to grow for the sake of the people who sit before and behind and to our left and to our right, who sit across the seas, across the oceans, who are our siblings, we have to be willing to grow. We have to be willing to start by just being with them in the light and in the love, whether we are looking for it or not. Today, we'll join in communion. It is a witness of God's acceptance and affirmation for us in the cross of Christ, in sacrificial love. But then after we do that, on each side there is a table. And there is the chance for you today to make a commitment to another step in relationship. Up on each table, there are five papers and they each have something you can do to take a step in relationship. This one says, text an encouragement, a verse or a prayer to someone from church this week. Ooh, scary. <laughs> this one says, ask someone to go out to lunch after church next week. That could be even easier to do because there's dinner in the evening. They can register online, Beth, and all you have to do is say, I'll go with you. Hey, you know what they could do? They could buy a ticket for a friend or a neighbor and bring them along. This one says, sit next to someone you don't know as well at church next week. <laughs> I was ducking in case there was produce in the audience. This one says, volunteer with someone for a church for a service project. You all know this, right? Every month we have a fourth Saturday. It's an opportunity to serve and care for people, sometimes in our church and sometimes not. Think about it. Write your one-minute faith share story. You all remember these, right? We were doing them in the fall. Have you thought about where you met God? What that means for you and where you think God's calling to? Write that out. Get with us and record it. Those of you who have done that, we'll catch up with you. And finally, ask someone, this one gets really scary, ask someone over to your house for coffee or dinner or games. We have someone interested. 
you receive communion, the light, the love, the acceptance, the affirmation in fellowship, and then you say, how will I grow? You look at one, you find one that fits you, and here's what you do. You tear it off, you take it home, and you stick it on your refrigerator until you do it. Yeah, it's scary. But all of it, the movement from here to here and all together, it's how we grow. It's how we grow held together by the one glue that holds us together, that the light and love of God meets us in Jesus Christ. It is durable. It is flexible. It is adaptable to a moving people and moving bodies. And it will hold us together, not in a solid and stayed and starched and ironed and fixed way, but in a way that causes us to grow both now and forever. Amen. Amen. With this in our mind and heart, we turn our attention to the meal which Jesus gives us. Let's join together in the liturgy of communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Creator God, you revealed to us your creation on earth. The waters flowed and the winds blew. You set the cosmos into motion and created living beings. You gave life to the plants and the sea, those creatures therein and all the animals of the earth. You put into flight the birds and insects, and you made people to walk on the ground. You blessed us all and called us good, but when our love failed and we turned away, you revealed a love for your people and all of creation that never ends. And so we praise you with all the company of saints and sinners singing your unending You continued to reveal your love for us in your son Jesus, who came to live among us and to move as a human on this earth. When he dined with his friends just before he was to be executed, he reminded them of your love revealed in the gifts of bread and juice before them on the table. He took the bread in his hands. He gave thanks to you, broke it and shared it with his friends, saying the familiar words, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, again gave thanks, and shared it with all who gathered, reminding them, drink of this, all of you. This is my cup of the covenant with you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's pray. Still creating spirit, be poured out on those gathered here and on these gifts from the field in bread and juice. Make them to be for us the body of Christ. As we receive them in our bodies, make us your body. Unite us with those who have come before us in your kingdom and with those who will come after us, now and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. Pastor Ron Verley, I hope you'll be willing to come forward and help me this morning. And uh, also, Cheryl Field and Ruth Mostek, if you'd come forward to help share in the communion elements I would appreciate that.
invite folks to begin coming from the back of the sanctuary, if possible. We'll invite folks forward to receive the meal Jesus gave us. And know this, as those folks begin to come in the United Methodist Church, the table of Jesus Christ is open to everyone. If you've confessed the sin of your heart and believe Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, there is room for you at this table and on this journey to transformation with others. If you're here today and you've got a pulse, can we get an amen if we got a pulse today? Yeah. Thanks be to God, you're welcome on this journey, and I hope you will come and receive.
the body and blood of Christ, to preserve our bodies and souls to everlasting life, we take, we eat, we drink, and in our hearts we are truly glad, and God's people said, Amen. It is remarkable how many of you stopped to do the homework, to take the next step in relationship because you have been met by the light and love of God in Jesus Christ. It is a pleasant thing when we walk together and when we trust and obey. Let's stand and sing that as our closing hymn. trust that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. You can trust that if you confess your sin, God will have mercy and will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You can trust, you can obey, and you can go along the way that leads to transformation, trusting that he will be the one who holds us all together no matter what may come. In God's presence and power, you are sent from this place. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Mm -hmm. 